guys welcome back um i'm just laughing at one of my intros i'm just recycling them i don't feel like making them they take a while sometimes all right uh first of all not financial advice consult your licensed financial advisor i'm not a licensed financial advisor or i'm not responsible for anything do your own research consult your licensed financial advisor and uh do not invest Anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. Hopefully my sound worked properly. Took a while to figure that out. Um, <clears throat> I, I added a new mixer and it was a mess. Alright, so a lot's happened this week. And uh, it started last week. So for the past few videos, I've warned this winter... Uh, we're probably looking at some sort of correction in the stock market. Uh, the yield curve on the 10-year started popping again, just like it did back in 2019, uh, towards the end of 2019, right? The timing of things, and then you know what happened in early 2020. Um, but back then, the repo market was, uh, going haywire and um i bet that's going to happen again okay so let's talk about the okay so i'm going to talk about the yield curve we'll talk about some of the news um metals broke out the market it dumped like 10 percent. we'll look at charts and ta um nobody should be surprised i anticipated this in the alerts, I put it out. I warned everyone. Alert. Yeah, so New Year's started here. And then I started uh, warning everyone. I put out the metals bottoms for, for now. I mean, I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, yeah, I warned up about all that and uh bitcoin or the crypto selling off with the stock market because they're completely correlated unfortunately and uh what is it then v then vt on bitcoin for the grayscale trust has been negative for like six months or something so they've been net sellers not buyers for uh for a while it started last year until now um, so any correlation with the stock market means Bitcoin sells off and then everything else sells off in crypto land, uh, except for maybe hex that seems to go up in a bear market. It's a nice hedge. All right. I'll make a separate video on that. I want to mainly talk about the stock market. Um, by the way, if anyone who joined recently, there was like two of you. You have to check your email because I send out an email once you get the report. And then uh, this is my website. And then if you didn't get an email, you should have. You could contact me. There's like five different ways. It's Twitter, there's Telegram. It's easy to contact me. Email. All right. So this is... Uh, the past week it's not too bad but i mean apple's down five percent for the stock market that's like oh my god the sky is falling uh microsoft google down three percent tesla's down six percent this past week um what is this home depot 
down almost 7%. I do feel like people are um, running out of maybe cash or they're not willing to spend it because the prices of everything is going up. And recently I just went to the grocery store and nobody has a full cart except for me because I go like once a month. And um, I'm getting like dirty look. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> people are looking at me like, why does this guy have so much food? How does he afford all this? I mean, I, you know, I only go once a month or every three weeks, something like that. So I can see that. I, I, I can kind of see that people are hurting a little bit. It's you could I pick up on small things as I go about my norm, normie day, right? All right. Uh, where are we? Let me bring up. So here's my Twitter. You should follow me there. If you're on my YouTube. Why not follow me on Twitter? I'm kind of active like all day, every day. I tweet a couple things uh, every day. <clears throat> and you do see. Oh, yeah. Another thing. I Meat. Uh, it's hard to find. And I talked about all this, you know, like months ago. What else did I want to show you on my Twitter? Uh, home prices still pretty high, but they're going to start coming down if um, rates are increasing, right? Yep. Uh, all right, here we go. Non-financial corporate businesses, corporate equities liabil liability level uh, versus gross domestic product. You know, it used to be gross domestic or uh, gross national product, something like that. Anyways, um, so stock to earnings versus G GDP, like market cap, is... um. It's way out of whack. Like the economy ob obviously isn't turning and producing more and becoming more efficient. It's just that the stock market is just, you know, pretty much a bubble. That's all that shows. This. Oh, this is funny. Mortgage costs me 50% of my monthly salary. Yeah, I mean, if you have a vari variable rate and uh, the 10 year is spiking over here, that's when all debts come due. I am going to talk about towards the end of this video how central banks, what their plan may be. How um, I it just came to me uh, yesterday and I want to talk about it. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So it might be another thing I kind of came up with. <clears throat> In the metaverse, Walmart is also trying to sell uh, NFTs, like virtual vaporware, to people, apparently. This was funny. It's a TikTok video. She's like, wait a minute. We pay taxes like 100 times over, right? So you get, you know, it's your earnings. Then you go buy something, then sales. Then if you want to sell it again... Uh, you have to, uh, the person who buys it from you pays sales tax again, and it's over and over and over until they take, you know. I'm surprised they haven't gone after people selling stuff at garage sales. They'll try. I mean, honestly, I don't think they will because they have no power at this point. It's pretty, the emperor has no clothes. Yeah, this is happening, I believe, mainly in very, um, urban areas that are very blue because of um the truckers don't want to drive into these areas because of um a certain forced uh procedure that they want and not just that it's just the inconvenience of putting on um just you know coverings on your face that just hold back all that bacteria that you breathe into your lungs Yeah, this is all over the U.S. now. It's really starting to become evident, and people are getting scared. 
and um, politically uh, very uh, unfavorable and unfavorable uh, leader we have right now. <laughs> Although I think he's hilarious because he's so um, bad. They're just non-existent. I don't even know who's running anything anymore. Uh, check the receipt. Global food prices hit highest since 2011, adding inflationary pressure. Now, 2011 was pretty bad, but it spiked prior, not prior, but like going into the mortgage-backed security financial crisis, right? And then it spiked right after because of all the uh, QE they did, one, two, and three back then. Well, what we did in the past two years now is like enormous compared to the QE back in uh, 2008, 9, 10, 11. So to bring it back down, the prices of goods, they have to, they have to raise rates, but they can't. That's what's funny. Uh, the Fed's trapped. It's they can't do anything. If they raise rates, um, everything blows up. But you know what? I I think I figured out what they're gonna do. I'm gonna tell you guys. So, and then you have protests, right? Now this is the bloodline. If the truckers stop, everything comes to a complete halt. No gas, no food, nothing. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, Mad Max. But you know what? It's, it, this is the way. This is the way. Um, if you want your um, powers to be, or the people, by the way, I hate saying powers to be. They don't have power. It's just all an illusion. And these heroes right here, what they could do is make them bend the knee very quickly within a week <laughs> but because once everyone gets really pissed off like there's nothing they could like it's it's game over and then then we could go back to 2019 or live like the floor the floridians right the f people in florida or texas or some of the red states everything could just go back to normal although it won't because nothing can go back to normal because the economy already crashed when they locked it down it was going to anyways, but I talked about the timing, and I believe it was all predetermined and everything. Um, but at least we could start rebuilding. But, um, I mean, the music hasn't even stopped yet, so it's too, it's, um, too early to even talk about that. But this does need to be done, because if um, the truckers, if everyone just goes along with this, you know, it's end, we're going to end up like Australia, all right? And then what comes after that is mass, mass, just dystopian starvation. I don't know, hell on earth. So, but I we already won. It's just we're going through the motions now, all right? Uh, what else? That was a funny meme. See, they already they're already buckling. It's it's already over now. All right. So let's get to the news. All right. Stocks puke overnight gains, tumble back to key technical support. Bofa predicts Tesla EV market share in the U.S. will collapse from 69% to just 19% by 2024. Yeah, if only someone could have, you know, predicted that. I made a whole video on it. Nobody watched it because everyone's a little fanboy. They, they want their little electric golf carts, super nice fancy golf carts. Yeah, they're fast off the line. I get it. But it's um, it's not sustainable. It's not. You know how much energy goes into extracting very rare, very finite resources to make giant lithium batteries. Like, take your cell phone battery 
and make it the size of like a coffee table or probably I don't even know how big they are but um it's not sustainable I mean it's great for mining stocks but um especially uh polyprecious uh mining stocks because they extract all sorts of metals which go into computers TVs EVs and everything that this new green deal re reset thing they want uh will need ironically i i feel like they want all the resources to come from uh um asia so we don't deplete our own i that's probably what they they've been planning that's why we, but but at the same time the us is completely then dependent on them and then that kind of answers their other um, goals that they want, which is obedience for us to live like in Asia, where, you know, your face is getting scanned every five feet you walk and your everything is just track trace database, right? But so it's like getting two birds with one stone. You get the resources and then you get absolute power over the sheep, right? It's not going to happen, but that's what I, that's what their plan was. So, anyways, EVs not it, it's not a reality, guys. I mean, right now we can't even get normal new cars in the U.S. because of the semiconductor shortage, right? And that's for uh, petroleum-based vehicles, right? It's not even for all these electric vehicles, and um, not just that, guys. I I've talked about it. The battery. Seven years, if you're lucky, you can't even drive these vehicles in, um, you know, a four season, uh, region where you get winters and summers. When the climate changes back and forth, substantially, it it destroys uh, a battery's uh capacity to hold um electricity. The the temperature, the extreme changes within the temperature, so then you're going to be replacing a battery every five, seven years. And that costs probably like one third or half the value of the vehicle. That's like getting a transmission every five years or getting a new engine, basically. <clears throat> All right. So here's what the future is really going to be. It's uh, hydrogen. What is this? I don't know. There was an article where uh, Amazon Bezos was thinking about buying uh, hydrogen uh, fuel. So you could power your home. You could heat it. You could create electricity. And hydrogen comes from water. All right. And that'll be the future. <laughs> I've already looked into a few companies, but it's a little too early for that. I have a feeling the bigger companies are going to buy them out. And then, like, Bezos, right? So. You just kind of have to uh, watch out for that. All right. So Morgan Stanley turns even more bearish as accelerated Fed tightening sparks bear market. Goldman's David Costin, by the way, who was this was um, authored by Tyler Durden. All right. Goldman's David Costin, who has been uber bullish throughout 2021, even though we learned yesterday that the bank was quietly selling pardon harvesting billions in stock positions for a third consecutive consecutive quarter. So inflation and economic and political problem and politically it's really bad for um current admin, right? And again, I've said this many times. The market's dumping now, right? They've got to juice it back up for um summer and uh fall this year so it i believe that they're um they're gonna let the correction happen now right they're gonna say that they're gonna raise rates to stop inflation because people are complaining about inflation it's all over the place and uh that might psychologically work for like a few months six months but then they're gonna turn back on the printing presses and they're gonna stop tightening or they're not even going to start tightening. I don't know. 
But uh, I mean, if they start tightening, maybe uh, you know, twenty five basis point one one and done rate hike if they're lucky too. But I don't know, guys. <laughs> the market's already dumping. <laughs> They can't reinflate if it goes past, like, I don't know, 20-25% correction. Then there's no way for them to reinflate it. So, I whatever they're going to do, they're probably going to do it by, like, before March. And then it'll be over with, and then they got to re reverse course. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about what their plan really is. So, again, it's going to be more smoke and mirrors. But I'm telling you, I haven't heard anyone talk about this. So yeah, um, it's seven percent according to their data. It's really like fourteen percent. And as Biden just said during his press conference, it is appropriate for the Federal Reserve to recalibrate the support that is now necessary to fight inflation. So expect the Fed to keep pushing until financial conditions tighten. What all that means for equity markets, markets is obvious, but just in case, if it isn't, Wilson explains val valuations will have to come down this year via a combination of higher back and rates and higher equity risk premiums. And so the changes to the bank's Fed forecast simply mean it's likely to happen faster now, making a hand off between lower earnings and higher earnings less seamless. The faster... The faster taper and hike schedule brings this valuation risk forward to the first half of the year. And considering that the S&P is now just above 4,500 and could drop below 4,400 tomorrow, one can add that the valuation risk has been brought forward to this month. Furthermore, given that much more aggressive timetable for quanti quantitative tightening, we could even see an overshoot to the downside of this Wilson thinks blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, it, I I told you guys this was going to happen. The reason it didn't happen like earlier is because I feel like the big players on Wall Street wanted to offload their stocks this year. So they needed a few weeks, right? Approximately three weeks to, to unload their stocks. And now they took profits for tax purposes. And now... You know, they're, they're pulling the rug. They're like, all right, let it drop. Because margin is at record highs for all these brokerage institutions, meaning all the retail investors' margin accounts are over leveraged and they're all long, which usually is a good time for uh, the big players, you know, to um, play not whack a mole, but, it, you know, it's a good time for them to take profit and, uh, let the correction happen, and then they'll buy the dip as soon as, soon as the Fed reverses course. The current projected PE for the S&P 500 is 18x by the end of the year. This target PE assumed a 10-year Treasury yield of 2.10% and equity risk premium of 345 basis points with their new rates forecast of 2.2% by Q2 and a much more aggressive timeline asset purchase reductions. We think the equity risk premium could easily reach 345 basis points. All right, blah, blah, blah. None of that matters. Uh, we'll look at the charts. I'll tell you guys where it's really going. But line, blah, blah, blah. There's massive meltdown in the NASDAQ stock. So the NASDAQ, here's the NASDAQ up top, right? This black. Uh, line well the blue line is underlying stocks like the smaller caps the mid to small caps um it's just the large caps that are keeping the index up and the index funds are keeping it up like like i've said in the past everyone's retirement fund just goes into a basket of index funding thanks to ray dalio and most of that money goes into um derivatives but it also, um, which an index fund is kind of a derivative, but a lot of that goes into the major uh, corporations, which are suppressing us and trying to destroy <laughs> humanity. Um, but um, besides that, uh, 
that's why it keeps the index high while the companies within the index their their individual stocks are just crashing so that divergence right shows you that there's something really really fundamentally wrong here and i wouldn't be surprised if i don't know a black rock is buying it artificially keeping everything up because they have direct access with the with the central bank and they get a lot of uh you know uh, they they buy bonds but you know they get a lot of fiat like a lot right so that's how uh the qe is off rolling month over month through that institution and i'm not i'm not saying anything i'm just assuming that um I'm not accusing anything. I'm just saying, I, I don't know, maybe it's something something like that's happening. Because that, that's, that also ties into the repo market and the over-the-counter market, right? Which George Gammon does a great job explaining all that, but I, I'm not doing it. It's, it's very complex and there's no point. It's just no money's moving around, like, left, like back and forth nonstop. And it... it it has an exponential through fractional reserve lending it has an exponential um uh it like branches out and there's multiples of the money okay so the bank goes buys bonds the 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 central bank get, lends out cash in the repo market the the institution right or the bank takes it and then they go and buy bonds and then they get even more cash from the central bank and then they could go and buy index funds or whatever or corporate bonds and then the entire damn thing just goes higher and higher and it becomes a giant bubble and it, honestly it's not that different from um mortgage-backed securities you know what was worse than mortgage-backed securities and the ninja loans and all that during 2008 it was like AIG and all the insurers who insured the entire thing uh, because of the triple rating uh, they got, triple A rating from the rating agencies because those people are your typical like you know, government employee bureaucrat, you know, and they're just looking at retirement and uh, getting maybe a cushiony job after uh, retiring from their um, public service, right? All right, that was that was a mouthful. I digress. All right, let's look at uh, RoboBank twenty twenty one. Showed the Fed has no clue. <clears throat> I think they do have a clue. It's just that they have to. I'm gonna tell you guys their plan. I think I know. All right, the Fed has made a remarkable pivot around the turn of the year, dropping the transitory nar narrative. And squeaking like a born again hawk. Recent testimony, speeches, and interviews have made it clear that the FOMC is gung ho and ready to start hiking in March, unless we see a setback in the real economy. <laughs> yeah, you think? I actually, last jobs data was just horrible. But, um, it was really bad. I, I, I didn't see it on my Twitter line. I, I think it was. Not last week or the week before. We expect that the Fed ha Fed to hike each quarter this year. Balance sheet normalization is also likely to come soon. In fact, we expect May to be the first live meeting. Are they being sarcastic? They're not. I. They're gonna pretend, and then something's gonna happen. Maybe around Eastern Europe maybe down in the Pacific, uh, south, east, right, Taiwan, I feel like something's gonna happen, because a lot is happening globally, I, I keep track of that as well, they, they need an excuse, the cold season, that's done and over with, it's over, um, I think it'll be the Eastern Europe thing. That'll probably be it. 
So they're gonna so th that'll be the excuse to not do tightening. But the market's already dropping just just the talks about it, just as they act like they're hawkish, right? It's all perception, guys. Here's an inflation chart. It's higher than the 1980s. It's the highest probably in a very long time. I don't know. Maybe ever. For the U.S. at least. Uh, here's the Fed's balance sheet. Record high, of course. <clears throat> Should be nearing $10 trillion pretty soon. Oh, here's that article. No. Correlation doesn't imply causation, but... By Tyler Durden again. Alright, largest technology companies that coincidentally have tracked unconventional monetary policy. That is hard to argue against the notion that central bank policies have been a big contributor to an incredible run for the sector of over the last six to seven years. Indeed, as the chart below shows, the only notable setback for the gigantic, for the gigatech space was when Global QT arrived in 2018, however briefly. Just don't show this to the handful of remaining macro tourists who are still so clueless. They actually argue the Fed doesn't dominate every aspect of the market while bizarrely still claiming to be finance experts. Yeah, so this is the FANG index and all that. We'll look at charts in a little bit. Why did I look at this? The Fed assets to GDP could decline to its pre-COVID level by the end of 2025. What? No, that's that's not going to happen. So these articles think that they're actually going to raise rates. I. There's no way. I mean, the economy would just load. All right. By Larry McDonald, we are in the early innings of a colossal growth to value rotation. I've talked about this for years. Everyone, you know, I think um, so. All the stocks that have been doing really, really well, all the spacs and all the nonsense, all the nonsense that's going to go away. We've already seen Uber and a lot of, and what is it, Airbnb and all kinds of other stocks just do horrible because they have no, they, they don't make any pro, they don't have profits, they they don't even have good uh, revenue to earnings, but uh, everything's based off of future growth, not current growth. Uh, Amazon was like that as well for a while, and they ended up doing very good because they pretty much. Became like a giant monopoly and like took over. Anyways, I'm talking more about like maybe Zoom or like these big tech stocks, right? Um, Apple, this and that. I I think those are gonna have a deeper correction. May not make new highs for a while, um, and then uh. Capital will rotate into uh, more basic necessities types of value plays. Commodity based, lumber, agriculture, energy, stuff like that. Infrastructure. Um, now, they didn't get to pass their infrastructure bill, but I, um, they're going to try to do it before the, <laughs> before the midterms because... Things aren't looking good for them, right? And I don't know if they'll even be able to. If they don't, I I don't know, guys. They're going to have to come up... Janet Yellen's going to have to come up with a plan to do helicopter money somehow without it having to pass if there's gridlock. But they might all pass it. I don't know. Because the current... Um, again, guys, Team Blue, Team Red, in the end, they all bend the knee to... to not their constituents, but uh, their their backers, right? The big money, uh, Wall Street and corporations. 
Here's a NASDAQ, 3% drawdown probability. Right, let's look at charts. All right, uh, here's Bitcoin and Ethereum on the right. I do think they're going to bounce. Not sure if they'll make an all-time high. They could, but some sort of bounce. These are weekly charts. I'll talk about this in my next video, but they, like I said, Bitcoin is sort of correlated to the stock market. So if the stock market bounces tomorrow, maybe ends this week, and today is actually Wednesday night. Uh, so we have Thursday. Tomorrow's uh, Thursday. The week will probably end higher for the stock market. That's what I'm looking. That's what I'm thinking right now. But then the correction will continue, probably halfway through next week and so forth. I'm believing, but uh. So cryptos will probably get a nice bounce here and then also correct with the stock market. As of now, that's what I'm thinking. Here's Hex. Looking very bullish. NASDAQ Composite is right here. Dow Jones. US Dollar. I'll talk about the DXY. Um, so... For the past few weeks, I've been telling my private members I'm hedging my portfolio. Before the year was over, I I took some losses on some stocks, uh, you know, because it's a strategy. You want to realize losses sometimes, especially on leveraged positions. So I did that because I was expecting a correction. And then I took and I rolled that over into, uh, I rolled some of it over. To hedge my entire portfolio with the Vixy, um, or you could do it with the Vix, but you know, I, I use some call options and I also buy the shares outright as well, uh, to uh hedge my entire portfolio against a correction because I do have margin accounts. Okay, if you're not experienced, you shouldn't have a margin account. But apparently they give every they start everyone off with a margin account these days, which is insane. That's why, like, you guys need to know what you're doing. If you don't, don't don't get a margin account. Because with time, it eats into your principal. So you'll go and sell stocks, and then you're like, "Hey, wait a minute, this was like worth ten grand, but when I sold it, I only got like four thousand. Well, that's because you have a margin account. And there's interest on it. All right. So, what are we going to talk about? Let's look at the Vixie. It's a nice move up. And I bought it like just a few days prior, a week prior to this bottom low. I bought it right down here around 14 bucks. It popped all the way up. I got a nice 18% pop. But the call option, that's like, you know, like 180%. Uh, gain. Well, it was for me at least. So, <clears throat> is there more for the volatility index? Yeah, I believe so. I just, I think, you know, it's gonna, oh, it looks like it wants to really break out here tomorrow. Might spike up and then sell back down, and then I'm gonna add to that position for uh, February and then going into March as well. But that is all dependent if the stock market bounces tomorrow. So you kind of have to watch out for that. But, you know, you get a nice move up. Maybe around, it'd be nice to break 20 bucks. Depends how sharp the correction will be, uh, the velocity of the correction on the, on the equities. <clears throat> Here's the 10-year yield. This is why the market is correcting, right? Because the Fed is talking hawkish because... They're trying to calm people's inflation expectations because your average normie is starting to realize, like, why are my groceries double the price <laughs> from, like, three, four years ago? This is insane. It's hurting me. I can't, like, I have no money at the end of my paychecks, you know? 
uh, gas is un. This is why a lot of people aren't even going to work anymore. It's like almost not worth it for those low paying jobs. Uh, you know, if you have to try, if you have to drive like forty minutes to get to work, buy a lunch. I like how much of your paycheck are you really even keeping? You know, and it's unfortunate. It's like the worst thing that could happen to uh people's standard of living. But you know, if people don't pay attention, let crooks take their future take everything from you which is really just a big um big companies guys that's where it's all going and no we do not have a free market this is a mixture of state and corporate and corporate right that's what we have and there is a word for that and if I, I just don't want to say keywords because, you know, <laughs> this is the world we live in because we have too many cowards. But, um, they're getting all the, they're getting bailed out while everyone else is getting inflation. Anyways, uh, the 10 year yield, big cup and handle, right? So I drew this, actually, I, I, I made this a while ago, like last year, beginning of last year. So I put that uh, around, uh, this was 2020 that I made this, between 90.9 and 1%, that's neutral. Things start crashing between 1% and 1.6%. Or the market gets a little shaky, let's say that. Cause it's not, it didn't crash. I was kind of wrong. So let's move this up. I think things are going to get real shaky. I mean, just at 2.6%. Because if you zoom out, we. There's some. See how the price. This is educational, remember? So I'm teaching guys stuff. See all this price action right here? So the bond traders are looking at that. I'm assuming. And that'll be major overhead resistance, but not really. I mean, this is yield on debt. But I think it ain't going above 2.5. 2.5%. Once it gets above... I mean, even at 2.25% where things are get, starting to blow up. But the housing market, everything just blows up. <laughs> just at 2.5%, I believe. 2.5, 2.6, somewhere around here. Game over, I believe. All right. And uh, we're not that far off. I mean, just in the past three... No, let's... Just in the past one, two, three, four, five. So in the past month... Yields have risen forty percent. That's a lot on the ten year for the ten year bond. That means nobody wants the bonds. What are bonds? Just giant baskets of fiat currency, basically. IOUs, right? Another reason why I think the DXY is weak. And I don't really want to get into the milkshake theory thing again. So the DXY is weak, but even after the market correction, which is different. So it's decorrelating from a uh, market correction. So people are... That is strange because usually knee jerk reaction is to get into dollars. So where's where's the money going? Are they buying bonds? Are they pushing up the yields? Maybe. Are they not actually they're not buying bonds, that's why yields are going up. Uh, I do have another chart with the tips. Where's the tips chart? I don't know. So tips are um, 
inflation adjusted uh US bonds and treasuries. Oh well. Yeah, anyways, this is a cup and handle. It's breaking out already. Let's go to the four hourly. I think they're going to do some yield curve control, push it back down to, to retest the one point. Well, I don't want to touch that. Yeah, maybe the 1.6, and then yields will probably go up higher. This is the free market trying to normalize everything, but they're not going to let it. They don't want to let it. So maybe uh, yields will drop tomorrow, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then they'll spike back up again and go even higher, heading for uh, that 2% uh, target. 2% breaks, and it's a quick shot to like 2.5. And at that point, the market is dropping another 15, 20%. We're going to get a, like a nice 20% drop from the all-time high, I believe. It's just that, you know, it's not going to play. It's not going to be dropping every day here. Okay, let's take a look at the FANG indexes on the left. NASDAQ is on the right. These are weekly charts. So, on the weekly, the FANG index actually broke the 50... That's a 50. Should be a 52. Well, it broke the 50. So it's probably at the 52. So it's pretty much on support at the 52 MA weekly, right? Let's take a look at the daily. Oh, there's my blue line. The blue line X is, um, major support or it should it's the 200 day if it fails which it did so the nasdaq has already broken through the 200 day moving average which is a big deal correction's been 13 percent on the nasdaq almost 14 it's pretty bad so a little more to go i mean Right to my blue line, which would probably be a, well, 15%. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is the FANG index. That's what I was just looking at, the FANG, not the NASDAQ. Here's the NASDAQ. NASDAQ isn't as bad. Dropped 11%. All right, so here's all the major indices, NASDAQ, S&P 500, uh, FANG index on the right corner here, Dow's in the left corner here, the Russell 2000 doing really bad, broke major support and just free falling right now. So the Russell 2000 is domestic, smaller to mid cap companies for the U.S. Oh, by the way, with the thing going on with Canada, I mean, Canada is going to suffer way more than the U.S., but it's still supply chain interruption. It's just like the worst time to have it. They're going to blame it on the weather. Some bullshit. You know what? That's the new thing. Probably. Weather. It's changing. Like, it... Guys, every time a volcano goes off, and recently a huge one went off, there was footage of it from space. You should take a look. It looks nuts. Um, yeah, every time one of those goes off, it like puts out into the atmosphere like probably a couple decades of all of humanity driving around and polluting just one of those mega big volcanoes um but every year we get you know maybe a few a handful every decade a couple hundred going off i mean not the big ones the big ones like the one uh, recently happened probably just like maybe one or two a year not even anyways The Vanguard Global Index is on support. It fell the least, the global one. 
Interesting. So this is mainly weakness for the U.S. But you're going to see it globally. It's because all central banks, all economies are in the same. So in the U.S., it's Americans haven't seen inflation like this abruptly happen like in their lifetimes so things can get real shaky i still don't think it's too bad but um by the end of summer it might be really bad so the dow the dow jones should hold up better than the rest because it's supposedly supposed to be more industrial jobs and commodity based uh and you know like i said value stock that's where all the value is right now the value stocks are no longer in the tech companies but now it's shifting towards uh commodities and you know for uh your basics which is what i try to specialize here and that's what i've been planning on for years now uh to be in to catch that wave because it's going to be enormous and i'm going to post all of uh the mining stocks that have done the best in my portfolio last year, which was a horrible year for all, uh, well, not all commodities, just gold and silver, but it was a great year for copper and all the other commodities. Lumber did really well, right? And all that. So I'm going to post that. Here's S&P 500. Surprisingly did not fall all that much. Compared to the Nasdaq and the Fangs. Only 6%. So the Dow and... Um, so the Dow and the S&P are holding up better than the Russell 2000. Which is weird. And uh, I... Maybe the Russell 2000 is getting hit hard because uh, small businesses, uh, well, they've been devastated in the past two years because of uh, lockdowns, but um, they're probably really suffering because of the cost of goods going up and they can't find people to employ because people don't want to work for shit wages or diluted wages from inflation, right? So the S and P and the Dow will probably hold up better, and I'm uh, I probably should have shorted. Uh, so I could go long with a inverse ETF to get gains off of the Nasdaq selling off, and I'm gonna look into that for the private group. All right, here's um agriculture looks strong. Uh, one of the members in the private group, veteran investor. He mentioned it literally at the bottom. I mean, this thing's gone up not quite 100%, but 90, something like that. And it's steady and slow, but it's, you know, it's nice to have one of these in your portfolio. Because while other things are volatile and going up and down, you've got a couple uh, positions in your portfolio steadily rising and keeping that margin for your account in the positive and the green and uh your balance you know nice and then and not in the red all right here's wti the purple and uh this is gold up here with the candles you can see the correlation between the two well, it's not always uh, the same, but back here in 2008, when uh, WTI went up, so did gold. And that makes sense because it costs more to mine it and produce it. Uh, the same goes for silver and everything else. So I do think there will be a correction in WTI pretty soon. Uh, let's take a look at... Uh, some of these energy stocks. These were great buys in 2020. And then I took profits too early. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at a correction. In uh, crude for the short term. 
and especially with uh if the stock market correct further corrects it'll take it'll it'll take the rest of uh oil down with it and uh, a lot the entire energy sector really and that that'll be the perfect dip bu dip buying opportunity and i'm i'm looking to uh get back in on uh, some of these All right, guys, so here's what I'm thinking. What am I thinking? I am thinking that central banks, this is what their plan is. Um, they're going to try to do tightening. While at the same time doing QE in the background to prop up the markets as best as their ability as they can. And they're going to send out more stimmy checks. They need to give people money while tightening rates. Believe it or not, that's what I think they're going to do. Why would they do that? Well, if they tighten rates, the cost of borrowing goes up. But so does the interest rate on your debts already owed, right? So what they could do is raise rates to satisfy uh, the bond market and the global market, bond market, so they don't all dump the dollar, right? But at the same time, they don't want the people to suffer tremendously and all lo and they lose everything. As the market dumps and the rates go up and every and then we get another housing crisis and blah, blah, blah. So the way they want to somehow avoid the pain is to just do helicopter money and give everyone money, literally, like do UBI and STEMI checks. And then people will have extra cash and supposedly they should be able to, with that extra money sort of pay their higher to pay the higher interest on their debts already due. And I do think that they know that this this can't go on for long, but they'll try it and just to buy another what year at the most, I believe. So here's my timetable that I'm theorizing and I could be completely wrong, right? Can't all you know, always be right. But um, if the market, so for the very short term, maybe a bounce tomorrow, Friday, it's a very short term bounce. And then in a few weeks or a week from now or whatever, a continuation with the correction, yields will continue to spike. And then the market's going to start dumping very quick and hard. Things are going to start breaking. Um, and then maybe another event happens. I don't know. And then Powell is going to take rate. He's going to push back rate hikes. That'll be the narrative. And then the plunge protection team comes in, but they need a way to, um, they need a, They'll, they need an excuse to, to sell more bonds and get more cash out into the system. I think they're going to do some sort of QE, like, they'll do more buyback purchases. They're going to do it through the repo market, probably, and then they're going to send out stimmy checks. I think their plan was to do another, like, week or two of lockdowns, just to have an excuse, but... They're not going to be able to do that. So they're just going to say, well, everyone is getting hit hard with this new cold season. So we're just going to send out another round of stimmies or something. And that'll juice the markets a little bit, right? It'll put a bottom in. Then the market will like dead cap bounce. And then they'll take the rate hikes off the table. And then something will happen. Uh, let's say Eastern Europe happens. And then that'll be the excuse to provide some, you know, to support the markets because of that or whatever. And 
the, they're gonna have to do more QE, like pass another bill of like two trillion or three trillion, or they're gonna try to uh, spring. If they fail at doing all of that, like all of it, if they fail at like the UBI and all this, like if they just can't get trillions back into the system. Even if they don't raise rates, the market will start rolling over at the worst possible time for the current admin, if that makes sense. And I don't think they want that. I think they want the music to play in the summer, like things to be all right. Because things could get destabilized very quickly. Uh, especially as inflation keeps rising and rising. So the way, so they're, they're cure. Oh man, they forgot to mention this. Um, we're talking about price, uh, controls, which leads really to more empty shelves. If you put price controls on any goods or services, what happens? You get a shortage of that goods and service because why would I sell something uh, if I don't make a profit, matter of fact, I might lose money if I if they do price controls, right? So let's say I'm I'm selling milk or bread. Well, let's do bread. Well, if they put a price control on the bread and they say you could only sell it for four dollars, but it cost me four dollars and twenty five cents to make it with all of the employee costs, insurance utilities utilities are going up remember energy costs shipping gasoline freight um supply chains are breaking just the cost of everything's exploding well now that bread cost me 425 four dollars and 25 cents but they put a price control for four dollars well then i'll just say well what am i gonna do i i can't support everyone i'm losing money so i just stop making bread and then the shelves will be empty. It's that simple. Um, what else? Oh, what did I... I want to pivot into something else that was important. Oh, a lot of companies last year did not raise their prices. Because they actually believe they're economists. Every big company has an economist. Or they just listen to the central bankers, Powell. Um, and they were promised that inflation was in control and it was going to come down. And they were going to raise rates. Well, they no longer believe that. And they're raising prices now all over the place. And um, to make up for all that lost revenue and money they lost last year. Because they, they took, you know, they took the hit for their consumers. Because they don't want their consumers to leave. Right? Because when you hike prices, people leave. Um... So they refused to do that, and then their profit margins shrank, shrank, and they're at the, probably at the point where they might be going negative. So they have to raise prices anyways. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be wild, guys. You think things are bad now? It's just gonna gradually and gradually get worse. Now, for that caveat, caveat, whatever. If the stock market takes a nice hit, twenty, twenty-five percent, maybe even a thirty percent hit. It might give a bump to the DXY and inflation might, because oil is going to go down, all commodities are going to drop with the markets and that'll give you like a temporary uh, relief to inflation. It might last a few months, maybe three at the most. And that'll be the perfect buying opportunity, I believe, to get these mining stocks cheap, super cheap. Recently, they rallied this week. But you'll get one more big uh, buying opportunity, I believe. I could be wrong, though. It might just take off. But um, Because, by the way, when they do raise rates, metals actually take off. That's literally what happened in 2010 and 11 and 12. Well, 9, 10, 11, 12. They were raising rates, and metals went to the moon. All right. So, and by the way, the... the Central banks are so behind the curve on inflation. Even if they did jack up rates like 5%, they're so behind the curve, it'll actually cause more inflation. And I talked about that in my last video. Not the last one, but maybe the one before it. 
and uh, it was actually a George Gammon video where this guy brought up the fact that um, if they raise rates, it'll actually create even more inflation. It's it's wild, guys. And I forgot. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to make this video like two hours long. But um, I'll get into it in my next video. I'll make a sticky note. I'll put it up here. Hopefully I won't forget. Remind me. Alright guys, if you want me to talk about anything, put it in the comment section and then I'll mark it down and then I'll try to talk about it. Alright. Alright, smash some likes, go to my website, join the private group, and then you have to get an invitation email. Um, yeah, till next time.